Hello, dear friends. We are sincerely happy to greet you again. Today we're going to talk with the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, I'm very glad that in today's conversation we can already summarize some results of the Eye of God experiment. Well, only some of them. You have to understand, friends, there is indeed a lot of material to analyze. We are conducting a comprehensive analysis, and today we can talk in general, so to say. Indeed, I would very much like to thank everyone who has taken part in the experiment and continues to do so. We keep receiving materials for analysis. Let's just say that I consider this experiment to be the most significant one in at least the last 20 years of my life. It really is a very important experiment that clearly demonstrates the possibilities and the whole situation that exists today. And those are our possibilities, which we, friends, have yet to uncover. What's really significant is that we have seen how destructive power is. This is indeed so. Everyone who accepted our offer to take part in this experiment with an open heart and took part in it in good faith, despite what consciousness told them, despite the fact that many didn't want to because they knew their weaknesses in advance, but those who were able to step over their self, so to speak, and participated, learned a very important thing. And the important thing is that power is poison, and it is indeed extremely concentrated and very toxic. Yes, you know, it's true. A lot of people felt that this experiment had some broader goals. And indeed, for the people themselves, it is also a very important experiment. I would just read out a few excerpts from the letters of our participants and what they said about it. Let's listen. After the forum, I was just wrecking my brain as to in whose hands these technologies should be in order to bring only benefit to people. And here they are, in my hands, thanks to a thought experiment. How would I use them? This is probably the hardest question I've ever heard in my life. And a great many people wrote how difficult and challenging this experiment is. What a huge test by power it is. It gives you a chance to know yourself better. This experiment could be called take the rose-colored glasses of lies off yourself. It perfectly sheds light on your own holiness. And another interesting point is that despite the fact that it was recommended to conduct this experiment for at least three days, many people understood a lot about themselves already within the first few minutes. Here's what they share, and I quote… What they didn't know before. Yes, exactly. They mentioned that, during the first minutes I saw a tyrant, a maniac inside me. Within minutes of owning these tools, I felt as if I became like the devil. During the first minutes of using them, I became L, and as a result, a 100% subpersonality. It's the most interesting experiment that gives insight into who lives in each of us and what he really desires. Sending you my love and gratitude. Peace be with you. Yes. All of us who participated, we all have matured a little bit. Perhaps I'd like to start with some humor, because one suggestion for the use of Vajra was quite extraordinary. One person, we all know, suggested using Vajra as a business tool. Really? Yes, so he suggested a very simple business plan, friends. That is, we all chip in, buy up all the toilet paper in a certain region, and then turn on Vajra. We create a demand. Why not, he says, three to five days of unstoppable diarrhea, and that's it, the business starts booming. Then we switch regions and do the same thing again. So, he says, very quickly we will earn enough money to buy any channels on mainstream television, so that they finally start telling the truth about the creative society. You know, I have a question. You know… Why not become an L right away? Why is it necessary to develop a business? Well, he's a good man. After all, he spoke from the position of a good man, you see. His Holiness didn't let him use 
Vajra, so that he himself becomes L. We were offered such ideas as why not program absolutely all people with the help of Vajra to tell only the truth or for hostility to be eliminated in people or program everyone to vote for the Creative Society so that we could hold a referendum right away. My friends, just look. Imagine a scene. This kind of man turns on Vajra, which affects the neurons in our brain, and we all stop lying. Can you imagine such a picture? Now, I am addressing, let's say, all married men. For example, you wake up in the morning, you're going somewhere, and your other half comes out and says, how do you like my dress? And you… and you cannot… you can only tell the truth. This is just a little situation, right? The death of a little L. <laughs> and many other things. It's a collapse of families, it is, I don't know, a collapse of friendship. Because the most interesting thing that this experiment reveals is that we are all liars, and there is an L living in each of us. This is really so. Of course, there were letters in which people tried, from their mind, without fully participating in this thought experiment, without, so to say, taking Vajra in their hands, but simply succumbing to analysis, they tried to impress the reader, Tanyusha, for example. They did impress, as people who didn't participate in the experiment, the experiment. but just fantasized about how it could be used with good intentions without harming humanity. One can clearly observe this evolution of honesty yes. in people, you know, from the beginning of the experiment, and even later, what thoughts came to them, and… Any normal person, if he got this tool in his hands, he would use it anyway, at first, because we have so much injustice in this world. Indeed, friends, just look at how unfair our world is, not only to us, although the world is unfair to each and every one of us. But, in general, groups of society are unfair to other groups of society. Our entire world is full of anger, hatred, or simply put, injustice. This is really so. How can we belittle anyone for speaking a different language, just because we do not understand that language, or because we are so proud of our own language that we belittle someone because of a different language, or because of the color of their skin, or, excuse me, because of their ethnicity. Is that fair? Each of us is here because God has given a chance precisely to us, precisely to us as personalities, not just to gain temporary life in this world, but to gain even true, eternal life. Each of us has a chance to gain eternal life. Think about it. And that's what we are here for. However, for each of us, so that the path wouldn't be too easy, and so that we can come to God only by deserving it, by cleansing ourselves of all filth, and by understanding the whole essence of existence, so that we can distinguish what evil is and what good is, and not confuse these concepts. There's Satan in this world, precisely for this purpose. It is the main guard who is inside us. It is the One who is our teacher, the true teacher in this world. And as crazy as it may sound, it is thanks to Satan that a human being, that is, any one of us, can enter heaven. Why? Because only by stepping over him and going through hell can we enter heaven. This is how God has arranged the world. This is how adult, self-aware and alive angels enter the world of the worthiest and become equal among them. Everyone who has succumbed to temptations, everyone who is weak as personality, everyone who loves Satan and doesn't love God, cannot enter heaven. 
everyone who values our material world much more, who values power over other people much more than God's love, cannot enter heaven. This is a perfectly just and right decision. But because of this, the world is filled with injustice. It is not because Satan is here and he manipulates us this way, but because we allow it. Yes, friends, it is you and us who support this unjust world. It is precisely because of us that now, right now, when I'm saying this, children are dying of hunger and children are dying of thirst. This is happening in our time, when you and us can change everything. It's enough for us to build a creative society. It's enough for us to elevate the value of human life as the highest value. And the world will change. It's enough for us to incorporate the eight pillars into our constitutions and jointly build an ideal world, at least the creative society, or even better, the ideal society. But that's already the next step. Then Vajra will benefit us too, and it won't be able to do us harm. However, in our consumerist format, each of you, my friends, who went through this thought experiment, realized how serious and dangerous this technology is. It is indeed the most dangerous tool that awakens L in each of us. And this is true. Why? I will explain. Those who were worthy of the Lord's world left for that world. However, after the times of the destruction of Atlantis, those people who hadn't perished, along with Elysium, remained. They were actually driven underground. As for those who remained at large, so to say, under the sun, they were not the best. They were the worst of the best, because the best had left. While there remained people, filled with doubts and their own weaknesses. And for 6,000 years, thanks to the fact that the spiritual power and God's love protected this world, for 6,000 years, those worst of the best held on and were able to leave for heaven. However, when evil came from under the ground, the world changed, and over the next 6,000 years, El, has multiplied in each of us, and in each of us his genes are flowing. In each of us there is his genetic memory, meaning there is a fallen angel in each of us. At this point, many people will come up with a question, what does a fallen angel mean? We are filled with various stories and various fairy tales from priests of all kinds who turned the teaching about the spiritual world into children's fairy tales and brainwashed us. So now we see a devil with horns and a tail who is supposed to come to us like a neighbor. There is no other way to say it from the outside. We have forgotten what Jesus Christ and the greatest of people, the worthiest of people, the last Prophet Muhammad said, Shaitan is much closer than one's carotid artery because he is in everyone. We have forgotten about this. We've been told that demons are on the outside and that one can drive them away by merely running around, like a shaman beating a tambourine and doing some, I don't know, theatrical actions. One can thus drive Satan out of a dwelling, and all demons and evil spirits will leave your house, or demons will be driven out of your car. In such a case, friends, how do you enter your own house? if a priest has driven you out of there? How do you get into your own car if he has driven you out? Yes, friends, you, because in each of you there is a demon, and sometimes even a whole legion, a huge number of demons. This is really so. And everyone who is honest about their life, everyone who strives to know their life, to know themselves, to know the spiritual world and who studies 
their inner world, even lacking the knowledge, but having curiosity, they do come to this understanding. A lot of scientists have come to that. And those very scientists, I mentioned them, even being atheists, but after looking at how our inner world and our spiritual and mental, let's say, apparatus is arranged, they come to understand that God exists and the devil exists, and that everything is not as simple as our consciousness, meaning our demon, sometimes tells us. Many of the smartest people in this world, those very scientists, we won't name them, but there are quite a lot of them, they have come to understand that our consciousness is not ours, and that the cruelest enemy lives in each of us, inside us, it is our consciousness. However, is it consciousness that urges us to do those stupid things which we did in our thought experiment with Vajra? That's a good question, because those desires which came didn't even come from consciousness, they originated from a sense of justice that supposedly awakened in us. And what does an awakening sense of justice mean? Everyone who used Vajra at least once turned into an L very quickly, within a few days, or even within several minutes. And this is an absolutely honest experiment. Why? Because… Let's just recall the words of Jesus Christ, who told us, people, that no one should be superior or inferior, and that all of us should be brothers, meaning no one should rise above others, and no one should take the poison named power. And what did our beloved Jesus Christ say when the devil offered him the whole world and to make him a king over kings? Offered whom? Jesus Christ. Here's the answer for you, that power is a terrible thing, whereas Vajra is a tool. Yes, if it is used not according to its intended purpose, if this entire power, the entire might of Vajra and the eye of God is concentrated in human hands, in the consumerist format, there would be a new L, and you wouldn't be able to do anything about that. Thus we go back to Lucifer and fairy tales about the fallen angel. Why? Because El himself was much better than any person living nowadays. This is for you to understand, friends. And it's true. When the previous civilization reached full bloom, they were nearly at our level, just a little bit ahead, and started building something similar to the creative society. They made one little mistake. They eliminated the transition period between the consumerist format and the creative one. Yes, it was called in a different way, but we will not argue about those epithets, what was called and how, and what it is called now, it doesn't matter. What matters is the very essence and the very meaning. This is justice. This is, first and foremost, the value of human life and the freedom of each of us. So at that time, the previous civilization came to this understanding, and having transitioned from the consumerist format to the creative one, they faced enormous chaos that began to ruin their way of life. And so, instead of making life better and more beautiful from the first day, they turned their world into a disordered chaos, into various groups of uncontrolled people, and they were forced to bring back the model of authority. And they chose the best of people, the one who inspired them on this path. Indeed, he was a very honest and radiant man, and his name was El. In the beginning he did a lot of good and really made their world beautiful. It was indeed an Eden on Earth. They restored the environment and made tremendous breakthroughs in science. They gave freedom to every person, 
However, he didn't give up his authority. So once, when he faced criticism, he used power. And after a short period of time, he turned into the one whom we call Lucifer. This kind of a legend emerged about him as a fallen angel, about the one who had one foot in paradise, served God and served people, but after tasting power from the fruit of temptation, he turned into a devil. He elevated himself to the rank of gods, to the rank of the Supreme God, and he appointed his children to be gods over us. After that, games began. And then, and then a lot of interesting things happened. Whoever is interested can watch it in the video where it is described, more or less truthfully, though very briefly. Yet one can get an idea. It's the video Atlantis, the elite in search of immortality. Whoever wants to, watch it if you haven't. However, that video tells about El's negative side, whereas I have told you about his positive side. Why? Because he really was much better than anyone living on this earth nowadays. He was the most honest and righteous person. But after tasting the poison of power, he turned into a devil. Based on that, and based purely on historical facts, many other people who were afflicted with this poison of power. If we look into history, our contemporary history, we will see that only those are praised in history who killed a lot of people, only those who seized enormous power and established their empires. And what do we see? Those are people who strive to become an L. And there is nothing else behind them, no humanness, and certainly no spirituality of any kind. In other words, the power which came to people, even to very good people, turned them into devils. Let's take a look at how, when using the Vajra tool in our own imagination, we turned into tyrants, turned into an L, yet we acted according to justice at first. But later on, later on, we acted just like L did. However, this applies only to those who treated the experiment honestly and continued it, those who tasted this poison. Let it be in their thoughts, in the experiment, but they taste it and sensed the taste of this poison and its destructiveness, and they realized how scary this is. In this regard, friends, I want to say that we have nothing to blame our rulers for. We ourselves poison them. Yes, we, each of us. When we vote for someone, endowing him with power, we pour poison into his food. We are those venomous snakes that sometimes sting good and wonderful people. We inject venom into them, which poisons them when they gain this power. So, we shouldn't take offense at them. We shouldn't blame them for anything. And we shouldn't resent that even after attaining a little power, becoming deputies, congressmen or whoever else. They call us sheep, they call us biomass, and do not regard us as people. Why? Because they have risen and perceive themselves as celestial beings with their very rigid hierarchy. But none of them knows happiness. Each of them feels only poison that is destroying them. This is really so, friends. It's a destructive, terrible poison. And we ourselves are guilty of that, because we support this format. So should we take offense that we are deprived of the freedom of speech? When a person is afflicted with poison, he doesn't tolerate other people's opinions. He is really poisoned with power. So when someone contradicts him in something or discusses him, 
And moreover, when they do not just discuss, but criticize him, he, like El, reacts. He reacts to the fact that he's doing everything for people, everything he can, while people are not grateful to him. So each of such individuals in power wants us to kneel and fulfill their every wish, so that we are obedient, patient, and under no circumstances look them in the eye, because it offends them. This feature is present in each of us, and we have to understand that. That's why it is important to build the creative society in which all power of this world, all poison, will cease to be concentrated and will cease to kill a human being in everyone who is endowed with power, that is, in everyone who is elected by us or afflicted with our poison, to cause this most serious and dangerous poisoning with power. Instead, by distributing this power among all people, we will bring it into a state of homeopathy, and it will become a medicine. We should remember, everything is a medicine, and everything is poison, depending on the dose that makes them such. It's an ancient saying, but it fits the concept of power very well. When all the power in this world is distributed among people, it will stop killing people, it will start creating, and then the world will be filled with justice. We can do this solely in the creative society, and that, my friends, is really the case. Until then, until we build the creative society, we should not take offense at those whom we ourselves have poisoned by elevating them above us. It is true, no matter how sad it sounds, and no matter how much they wanted to be humane, or wanted to be humans after ascending this Olympus of power, sometimes even the best of them send tens and hundreds of thousands of people to certain death, in order to defend a lofty idea for their country or for the future of humanity. In the consumerist format, we cannot even condemn them because they are doing the right thing. But is it really right if we have brought the situation to such a point? After all, when people are dying, it means that politicians have made a mistake. They failed to create conditions in which people would prosper and be happy. Of course, they wouldn't succeed, because power is poison. And where there is poison, I'm sorry, paradise trees don't grow. And that's true. That's the point. But we can turn poison into a medicine. Everything is in our hands. But let's return to discussing our experiment. I'm sorry for such philosophizing, but I think we had to talk about it, so that we understand, understand how this world is arranged, and understand how important and serious this tool is, which gives unlimited power, which gives invulnerability, and indeed a person who gets Vajra in his hands will be invulnerable. We won't be able to do anything to him, we won't be able to take it away from him, to kill him, or to do anything else. Yet he will be able to control every one of us. And in our world this is frightening. Yet it is merely technology, it is merely a device that can be of great benefit to any one of us, especially if, God forbid, by his stupidity or by accident, a person gets into a difficult situation, and then Vajra becomes a blessing and a tool of saving human life. Is it possible to refuse it? No. After all, many poisons are used in healthcare nowadays to treat fatal diseases. Just look how simple everything is. Everything is poison, and everything is a medicine, depending on the dose and on how we use it. 
Yes, the question was raised. To whom should it be given and in whose hands should this tool be? I suggest friends to postpone this question until the moment when we get rid of stupidity in our heads, when we really do that. If there is God's will and our aspiration, I'll say it again, friends, this depends not on God, but on us, on our aspiration, on our desire to change our world, which is full of injustice, full of evil and poison, to change it into a just and beautiful world of healthy people. If we do that, then in this creative society we will make use of this Vajra together, and we will understand how to use it safely and with a benefit for everyone. But as long as we are in the consumerist format, as long as Lucifer's genes predominate in us, I think we shouldn't rush with this technology. And it seems to me this is the fairest decision as of today. But the most interesting thing, Igor Mihailovich, is that you've actually said about justice, and many people noted this point, that if they had these very technologies, Vajra or the Eye of God in their hands, they would do this justice as they envision it, in a very narrow sense. And now we understand the value of the creative society when the opinion of all people is taken into account. May I interrupt you? Excuse me, friends, for interrupting Tatiana, but the point is that they would do the justice. That is, each of us would use it to improve this world, to remove injustice and to punish evil. This is really true. A lot of good people, our friends, tried to remove injustice from this world. They didn't even want to kill other people, those who brought evil, those who came to us with weapons, and those who had sent those who came to us with weapons. They merely put them into a coma. However, our friends themselves came to a conclusion. What does it mean to put someone into a coma? It means not to take someone's life, but sort of to disable him. Sort of to disable, but how? A person who is in a coma needs outside help. Who will take care of such people? when they are in different parts of the world. Yes, the Eye of God will allow us to see them, but what if there are hundreds of thousands of them? What will we do with them? But what if there are millions of them all over the world? Actually, some people even suggested that the entire military should be put into a coma at once. For what? They are our brothers, they are our friends, they are us. So why should we be put in a coma? Because we are defending our own country against enemies. And why do we have enemies? Because there is evil. We have evil. And our neighbor has evil. When evil goes against evil, excuse me, it always results in fire. For what should we kill and punish firemen who put out this fire, which is the result of a collision of devils? A simple question. But people sort of wanted to be better, to put them into a coma that is, to kill gently, or to sort of shift responsibility onto God. Look how interesting everything is, how our consciousness works, right? But consciousness itself was in shock when we entered this experiment. Even our consciousness said, no, you shouldn't do it. But we continued to act. We were watching and observing it from the side of personality, and the latter was in shock. So who in us was playing? I think everyone, should answer this question themselves in order to see that Lucifer. To remove him from this world means… it means to stop perceiving this world, to stop seeing it, because precisely thanks to him we can communicate with each other. Yes, this is wonderful and splendid, but, my friends, then we should build not just the creative society and become one united civilization, but we should already reach at least the fifth level of development in order to get rid of him. It's a good goal. It is beautiful and it is really worthy. We should and are obliged to strive for it as a whole civilization, every one of us. But guys, let's at least create a civilization 
preferably a civilization of the first level of development. We have everything today, all the capabilities and all the technologies. We have a chance to build this civilization for the first time in 6,000 years. Actually, why 6,000 years? For the first time in 12,000 years, we as humanity have one foot in a wonderful future. But we lack the other foot. Let's actually do our best to take this half step and enter a wonderful world, right? Igor Mikhailovich, can you also comment on the choice of those people who refused to participate in the experiment under various pretexts, that he thought is material, that the responsibility is great and they are not ready to take it? It is their choice. I'll say this, it is their choice. We, people, have God-given freedom and no one has the right to violate it. But what can I say? This experiment is very important and very illustrative, because it shows people what power is. And every person begins to realize, I mean those who have entered the experiment and really taken it seriously, now those people begin to realize why we have so much injustice and why the world is so terrible. You know, if it were by my will, I would propose to carry out this experiment all over the world, among higher educational institutions, among high school students, so that people who have matured, and before they enter our world, well, let's say, being already specialists, or before they come to power in the consumerist format, they would at least mentally hold Vajra in their hands, and at least mentally realize how strong Lucifer is in them and how he kills all the injustice in this world, exactly that Lucifer who lives in each of us. And I think the world would change if as many people as possible went through this experiment. As of today, we do not have this opportunity. We can only recommend it, but it seems to me that this is the most important and most responsible experiment in the whole world, which I think every human being should go through. Why? Just because we can philosophize about many things, that very L in us, things that we are honest, good and spiritual, you have to agree, can we really allow anyone to criticize us? No, it is us, after all. Yes, sometimes we can make mistakes, but we are the fairest and the most honest. But only when you have held Vajra in your hands, even in a thought experiment, only then will you understand, my friend, the danger you can pose to all humanity, if you have that chance. And only then, my friend, will you understand that we should never give anyone such a chance to rise above anyone of us. However, this is impossible in the consumerist format, because we ourselves elevate someone above us. But we understand very well that we should and are obliged to build a world in which there will be no concept of injustice, in which there will be one concept, that there is nothing higher than human life, and that we should all love each other. So, friends, let just love each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you and God's love.